Hey, everybody, it's Carrie Knudsen. Thank you so much for joining me on my show, Get Big Out Loud. I'm really excited to have you with me today. It's my first solo show, which is a big step out of my comfort zone, but I'm really excited because I've got a great topic. And also, I want to invite you to call in today as we talk about uh, what we're going to talk about, which is dualistic thinking. I want to invite you, if you have a question or comment, to go ahead and call at 1 800 930 2819. And so, like I said in the beginning, we're going to talk about a concept today called dualistic thinking, and we're going to talk about what it is and how it shows up in our life and our lives and really how we can benefit from shifting our thinking into some other more complex ways. Um, and what I really wanted to talk about when people say dualistic thinking, you're like, what the heck is that? Well, really, it's, it's the kind of thinking of this or that. And it means like, yes, no, right, wrong good or bad. Like when we have those kind of polarized thinking patterns, that's what we, what a concept called dualistic thinking. And so you might think and it comes up some ways, like if you go to a movie and you might say the movie was good or bad, it was awesome or it just sucked, right? Like, and you might, that's, that's your summary statement, or I really like that person or I don't, right? They're just, they're just like, they rub me the wrong way or yeah, they're pretty cool. Or when you think about how you do things, there's a right way in a wrong way. Usually the right way is how I do it, right? And the wrong way is how other people do it. And again, these are just some examples of simplistic ideas of dualistic thinking. But if you reflect in your own life, you probably have some areas of your life where you're like, wow, I really go quick to dualistic thinking. Like this is either good or bad, right or wrong. Like you hear something, especially now we're talking a lot about politics, right? Good or bad. You're either for it or against it. Um, when you think about issues you care about, we're usually so passionate that we know what we're for and against, right? And we're not really open to listening to more about that. We already know our answer. And so dualistic thinking isn't necessarily bad. Like sometimes it's harmless. Like I, for example, when given the choice of chocolate or vanilla, will always choose chocolate. Like there's just no choice. Um, I feel bad that sometimes maybe vanilla, maybe I'm missing out on some other flavor options, um, but not really actually, because I know I like chocolate and it tastes really good. So that could be like a harmless thing where it's keeping me from maybe trying other flavors, but I like what I like. Um, sometimes actually dualistic thinking can also help us move forward. It creates a strong urge in us like um, to create something different in our lives. For example, sometimes when we don't like something about ourselves, it's like, you know, enough of this, I'm going to change it. Or when we want to like move out of a situation, I want to start living another way. I don't like this way. I want to live another way. And it helps kind of catalyze how we feel about something because we're on such one end of the spectrum that we really are going to go to another. Um, but sometimes it's really dangerous. And when dualistic thinking becomes dangerous, a lot of the times it has to do with two things. One is when we internalize things, I am always this way, or I am never this way, or this is just how it is and not another way. Like when we limit ourselves because of dualistic thinking and how we show up in the world. And, and that really, again, keeps us small, keeps us limited. It says, I'm the person that doesn't do this kind of thing, or I can't because, and it's very limiting when you, when you internalize dualistic thinking, it's also very limited when you externalize dualistic thinking to other people. And that means us versus them, right? When we start to dehumanize people and put them in categories. Um, and that is a really scary and harmful way of thinking about people because people are incredibly complex. And when we put them into certain categories and don't give them room to show us their true complete selves, it can be very harmful. Right. And so what I feel like is important to talk about dualistic thinking is this idea that it limits our beliefs about ourselves and other people and what's possible. It keeps us fairly rigid and especially around um, dualistic thinking can kind of tie into our perfectionism tendencies. Like it has to be perfect or it's nothing at all. Like I, I love the quote, perfect is the enemy of good. But a lot of us are like, if it's not perfect, then it's not happening, right? And that's a very dualistic way of thinking. Like it's not good enough, then I failed. If it didn't succeed, the whole thing, if you're not first, you're last. That's a very dualistic kind of thinking. When in, in fact, if you, if you think about that a little more, really? And is that helpful, right? 
Um, it also forces us to choose sides when we're thinking dualistically. We have to be on one side or the other. And mostly the problem with dualistic thinking is it's incredibly simplistic, right? It's incredibly simplistic. And nobody has a life that is so simple that they can be reduced to this or that, yes or no, right or wrong. And if that's why I love talking about this, because if you think about your own life and the complexities that you have and who you are and how you show up, if you can start to get in touch with that for yourself and you could start to externalize that, that other people have those same things going on with them. And that is such a helpful way to start thinking about how we want to connect with other people and also how we want to work on ourselves and stop being so, so hard on ourselves, right? And, and also have opportunities to grow and shift. So I want to give you just a quick example of one thing that I think a lot of people struggle with, with dualistic thinking. And um, let's say this is like anyone who's been on a diet knows this, like you get really geared up to get on your diet and maybe you have your food plan and you have all your stuff going right and you've been eating well because you have control over it. And then all of a sudden one day someone offers you a cookie and you're like, oh God, this cookie is going to take me off my plan, but I really want the cookie. And should I have the cookie? And then let's say you eat the cookie and then you feel totally like a shame spiral of bad feelings around. I hate the cookie. Now my diet's over. I just ruined it all. I should just give up and I should eat the ice cream. And then I won't do my exercise today. And in fact, I'll have another cookie, right? And we do this downward spiral because one thing, if it can't be perfect, it trips us up. And then like the whole diet's ruined. And I'd be interested to think if any of you can relate to that idea of like, I'm, I'm on my plan and it's, it's all or nothing. I'm either succeeded or I failed. I've either eaten perfectly or I've eaten, it's a disaster. And I feel like that's a gateway drug. That kind of thinking is a gateway drug to more bad decisions, right? And so part of thinking about why we need to shift from dualistic thinking is to help us stop getting in that shame spiral and then having it be like, a free for all, right? And it also is important to think about trying to live in your life more realistically, not more perfectly, right? And that again is where dualistic thinking really sets up for us for failure. And that's why I wonder if you like, um, if they ever have thought about that in terms of, of your own kind of how you think. And the diet is such an easy way to think about that because all of us, have, most of us, I guess, just have had that experience where we're either going to do it hundred percent. And if we mess up, then it's nothing at all. And really, if you eat the cookie, then get right back on to what you were doing. Maybe it's okay that you have the dang cookie. Okay. Maybe it's actually part of living a normal life. Right. So that's one thing I want to talk about dualistic thinking. Another time, thing I want to just address as we're talking about this dualistic thinking idea is that sometimes it becomes the default pattern. So we start to default to dualistic thinking. And what I mean by that is we don't even know that we're doing it, but because of circumstances in our lives, we it, it just is like a natural human tendency to, to do that. And what that looks like is sometimes if we have a pressure to make a decision quickly, like I have to know right away, what do you want? Yes or no? What's going to happen next? Like if someone's putting pressure on us, that can really trigger dualistic thinking if we have to make a decision quickly. Also, if we become uncomfortable in a situation and we do not want to sit in that discomfort, which most of us have a hard time doing, we want to alleviate the discomfort as soon as possible. We might make a dualistic kind of decision because we don't have the capacity to wait in being uncomfortable. So we want to be comfortable. So we make that decision right? As fast as we can to get back to our comfort level. And that can be hard because learning how to sit with discomfort and giving yourself some time to figure things out is really a gift to you. And sometimes when we make those decisions because we're uncomfortable um, and we're just trying to feel better, we have to like repair things later, right? When we, we do that, we said something we didn't mean, we did something we didn't mean, we went ahead with something we really didn't want to go ahead with. Um, we have to repair those things later. Um, also, when we are emotional, angry, overwhelmed, upset, or tired, it is easy to default to dualistic thinking because we don't have the energy to sit with more complex thoughts, right? Oh, just get it over with. Okay, let's just do that. Or I don't want to decide, right? So that can be a real trigger. So just acknowledge that in yourself and notice. Another trigger that I find is the biggest one for most people is fear. Fear 
triggers us into dualistic thinking like nobody else, like nothing else, because it shuts down our ability to see past the current moment because we get scared, we get closed up, we want to get out of that fear, we don't know what to do. Sometimes we look to other people, tell me what to do. Fear is a, is a pathway to that because again, it shuts us down. We want to get out of the discomfort and everyone has experiences where they're afraid, where they feel pressure, where they feel overwhelmed. And that can really lead to dualistic thinking in a way that is not helpful for us. Um, so when we think about this, I want to tell a quick story um, about how this showed up in my own life, especially around the idea of fear. Um, so I am a therapist by training, and I also have my business, Knuts and Speaks, where I, I used to travel all over the country giving presentations to live audiences. And when I realized what was happening with the pandemic, I thought my whole job is traveling and speaking to people, large groups of people. And if I can't do that, what's my business about? And I had to sit with them for a while of like, well, then I guess I can't do my business. I guess I'll wait till the pandemic's over or just fold it down. Maybe I should, what should my next career be? And just feeling like I can't even think outside the box of what I, else I might do. And the whole idea also myself, my standards were like, you know, if I can't speak in person, then I can't speak at all. And virtual training, not an option. I don't like virtual trainings. I don't like to sit through them and then nobody else will either. So that's not going to happen. And using this very concrete, like <laughs> ideas to, to also feel safe and why now I don't have to try because I've made up some really good stories for myself. Um, also, I don't want to do it another way. I like it my way. My way works. I don't know if another way will work. And that forced me to step out of my comfort zone. So no, I don't want to do it. And again, do you see how that just kind of comes up as a very natural reaction to things? And I, it, it wasn't like overnight. I'm like, yeah, I can do this. It was took a couple, I'd say a couple of weeks of real sadness. And then a couple of months to kind of come out and say, okay, what's going to happen now? So it's not like you can recover some from some things really quickly because sometimes we can't see our way out. And again, that's when dualistic thinking take holds. If I can't do it this way, I'm not doing it at all. If my job looked like this way before, I can't re-envision it. I don't want to do it another way. I can't control the other way. And I don't want to learn new things. Do you see how those all come and below everything there is, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared of what was going to happen next. And I'm so sad at the loss of what was. All right. And so it's very easy to go to that place. And once you can check yourself in terms of like, oh, this is how I'm thinking, you have another opportunity. After the break, we're going to go to break now. And after the break, we're going to talk about what the opposite of dualism is and what that looks like. So we're going to have, we're going to go on a break and we'll come back and talk about that in a few minutes. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to Get Big Out Loud with me, Carrie Knutson on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. I'm so happy to be here today, my first solo show. And we got through segment one, which was very exciting. And we're back now talking about dualistic thinking. The title of today, the topic for today is dualistic thinking and how we can shift from that into more complex thinking. And so you might think, well, what is this woman talking about and what gives her the right to talk about this? So I just want to tell you, I'm a therapist by training and a lot of the work I do connects with human development and how we think um, and then act based on that. And I do a lot of presentations around different topics, mostly emotional intelligence. And that, that talking about emotional intelligence has then had a bunch of other presentations offshoot from that in terms of when we talk about mindfulness, self-care, how we think about our thoughts, how we develop better teams, how we handle conflict. So a lot of my work around that um, has come from the place of emotional intelligence. And why I'm talking about dualistic thinking today is how we think about our thoughts um, is so important. And there's a fancy word called metacognition for that, which, which really means thinking about your thinking. And what I love about this idea is when we think about our thinking and we do it without judgment or criticism, but with curiosity and compassion, there's real opportunity there for us to start to shift how not only we think, but then how we act because of that. And that ties in perfectly to this idea of dualistic thinking, which is what we've been talking about. And that's the idea of this or that 
right or wrong, good or bad. And what I want to shift to now is the idea of how in real life, most of us as people, we've grappled with situations where the answer was more nuanced than a simple yes or no, where you had to say yes, but, or no, because, and, and you need a little more around that, or where we process emotions that were more complicated than, oh, this was good, or that was bad, that we've had a lot more depth in our feelings around something. And then sometimes we've dealt with things where the line between right and wrong and where it is on the scale might be blurred for us, right? And why is this? Because we are complex. Humans are incredibly complex. You are incredibly complex and so am I. And so if we recognize this complexity, it can really help us to, again, not sit in either if it's all good or it's all bad, I'm either totally perfect or I did it wrong. Um, and when you look at yourself or other people, like they're either right or wrong, it allows us some opportunities to explore the complexities of life. So when I was thinking about how to talk about the opposite of dualism, I'm like, well, I better look up what's the opposite of dualism. And I couldn't believe when I looked it up in the dictionary <laughs> because it said non-dualism. And I'm like, how can you, how can non-dualism be the opposite of dual? It doesn't explain what it is. Um, so I have a monthly newsletter that I send out. And in my monthly newsletter, I asked my subscribers, I'm like, said, I said, please, if you have any ideas, can you give me some other ideas for what the opposite of dualism maybe that doesn't have anything to do with non-dualism? So here's what they came up with. And I was pretty proud of my readers. Um, so one person said multidimensional. So I thought it was pretty good. Another said impartiality, which makes you think like if you could hold a space to be impartial, like as if you didn't know all the information. One person said observance. And I like that idea of sitting in observance of something. Another person said recipro reciprocity. <laughs> I can't say the word right. Receptivity. Like I kept thinking reciprocity. Receptivity, being receptive to other ideas or ways of being, broad-mindedness, which I thought was pretty good, interest, what if showing an interest in, in another thing or another person, interest outside yourself, um, and then we have understanding, being understanding, and then openness. So I thought all these were really great. So I want to thank everyone who um, subscribes to my newsletter to, for writing me back with these great ideas. Um, and I want you to think for yourself, what word most resonates with you when you think of the opposite of dualism, right? What word most resonates? Is, is it something like being understanding? Is it being multidimensional, looking at things that way, or being more interested in people, observing yourself and others? What word kind of resonates with you? And think about that. Um, I want to also share a, two things that people in my newsletter who wrote back to me shared that I thought were really interesting. Um, one person said this, and her name is Kendra. I want to read this. She said that maybe the opposite of dualism is difficult to find because when being non-dualistic, there is no comparison, no right or wrong, left or right, et cetera. Your mind is open, receptive, not seeing only two options, which I thought that was pretty insightful, Kendra, because maybe it's hard to have an opposite of dualism because it isn't a this or that proposition. So I thought that was pretty good and pretty interesting to think about. And then I had another person who wrote a name, Mark said, think about it. Black and white TV was never just black and white. If there were no shadings of gray, it would be two dimensional. We live in a three dimensional world. And I thought that was really great too. We live in a three dimensional world. And so I thought maybe one of the ideas to think about is how can I see this more in 3D, right? How can I look at it from multiple sides and how can I see things of more than just flat or on its face. So I wanna thank those people for writing in because I thought that was a really interesting way to look at how we could start to shift from what dualism looks like to something something else, something that looks like something different. Um, and so again, if you have other ideas for words that we could add to this list or other examples or ways of thinking about multidimensional thinking, I encourage you to call in one 800 930 2819. 
And that's a way you can get on the air. Just like, remember when you called, um, back, I don't know if any of you, when I was in college, we used to, I went to Cornell college in Mount Vernon, Iowa, and they used to have a campus radio show. And depending on which friends of yours were DJing, you'd call into the show and see if you could get on. And then you would hit the record button at that time to hear your voice. Like, Hey, I'm calling in to request the cure. And then you would call. Um, so I don't know if any of you have those memories, but if you want to call in, we're happy to take your calls. So we're going to um, set up to take a break in a few minutes, but what I want you to think about is how can we shift when we come back, we're going to talk about how do we shift our thinking process, right? To start thinking from some dualistic to more complex ways. How did that process look? How could we make that shift happen? So you're listening to me, Carrie Knudsen on Get Big Out Loud on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how we actually make that shift in dualistic thinking to something more complex and more multidimensional. Thanks for listening. I would like to thank Fenny for my Cure music. Uh, I totally love the Cure, especially pretty much high school through college. And even my husband made me get rid of my Cure tour shirt when it was just, it was used to be black and it turned gray and it was kind of had holes all over it. He goes, I think it's time for your 1990 Cure tour shirt to go. And this was just a few years ago. I will disagree with that. And I hope you find a new one to replace it, to be honest. I know when they tour again, I'll be out. I'll be going back. To and my e eBay is still alive too, so I'm sure you can find one there too. Oh, that's true. Oh my gosh, ah! thanks, Benny. Sorry, <laughs> hubby. I'm sorry to your husband for that. <laughs> no, that's all right. It was it was kind of time for that shirt to go. It was like my uh, comfort shirt. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'll get on eBay right away. Perfect. There you go. We we're having a great talk over the break about you know calling in and having memories from calling into um, shows and um, listening to our favorite DJs and I just love having that moment of memory of that because times have sure changed now but I'm so glad we can still be connected in this way and whoever thought I would be on a radio show on my own show so thanks for joining me this is uh, my name is Carrie Knutson and this is Get Big Out Loud and it's my show about living the complex beautiful right of life and how we can really think in different ways and how when we show up the reason we're talking about get big is how when we show up past our limiting thoughts and beliefs we can really get big in the world and share our gifts so today we've been talking about something a concept called dualistic thinking and dualistic thinking really limits people in a way that most of us can be familiar with dualistic thinking. It's this or that, yes or no, right or wrong thinking, kind of simplistic and very much on the edges of a continuum. And so what we talked about is what dualistic thinking looks like, and then maybe some alternatives to dualistic thinking. And some of my reader, my readers of my newsletter came up with some great ideas for me. If you want to get on my newsletter, you can just head over to knutsonspeaks.com and sign up there um, for, to get my monthly newsletter. And then you can see what this is all about. But what I was talking about my newsletter was dualistic thinking. And then I was like, let's talk about it on the show. Cause it got so many responses. So what we talked about before was how it limits us. And then we talked about what the opposite of dualistic thinking is and how maybe two things can be true at the same time. And so I came up with this idea of why don't I call it complex thinking, right? As a way to have what's the alternative to dualistic. So I'm calling it complex thinking. And it might show up when you think about things instead of um, this has to be true or that, maybe two things can be true at the same time, like this and that. So you might say the movie had great cinematography and the acting was awful, <laughs> right? Or I like many things about you and some things are hard for me to understand. <laughs> Or there are ways I like to do things and there are other ways that are just as good. And when you even think like, could I start to say things like that or think things like that? It adds a little bit of space or an opening to start thinking in a different way. So notice that if you kind of do this or that, or maybe this and that could be an option. And so again, when thinking about how we get to that place, I'm using the word 
complex as an alternative to dualistic thinking, right? And so I wanted to hold that idea of like, what would complex thinking look like in my own life? Um, and for me, I have to really think about situations where I want to engage in complex thinking because sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like I don't want sometimes to engage with someone who um, might have a differing viewpoint because the whole time they're talking, I might be thinking about what I want to say in response to them to like prove myself and to show like why I'm right. And part of creating some space or being open is stopping your mind from doing that and just letting that person being fully with another person when they speak without thinking about how am I going to respond, right? What's the next thing I'm going to say? To hold some space for them to say what they need to say and be fully engaged. Also, I notice this in conversations sometimes. Um, my husband's name is Joe. And besides making me get rid of my cure shirt, which actually needed to happen, sometimes he'll um, say things like, he'll be like, hey, I was thinking about um, doing this to the garage. And my first response would be like, no, we don't need that in the garage. Like he wanted to put up a punching bag in there. And I was like, how would the beams work? It's too heavy. We don't have room for that. So in instead of being like, tell me more about what you were thinking. Sometimes my first response, like, hey, I was thinking about doing this. No, we can't do that. <laughs> Simply because I don't know how it would look, right? But I haven't taken the time to say, why don't you tell me more about what you think about that? What made you think? What are some options? Like just again, creating the smallest bit of opening to let a person's ideas come out, to let a person speak without shutting them down and without shutting my own mind down about what's possible, right? And I think during this time, a lot of us have had to work in different ways. <laughs> and people said, we've had to change in ways that were thrust upon us, forced upon us because of the pandemic. And so a lot of our initial responses, you're going to have to do things this way. I don't want to, I don't want to work remote. This isn't what I signed up for. And it took some of us a while to be like, well, how could it look? How might this work for me? How, what would I need to learn to be successful? Like it takes some time for that, but notice in yourself where you just kind of shut down. Like I don't want to, or no, or that's not going to work because we all do it. Um, especially with people who have different viewpoints from us, we tend to shut them down pretty quick in our mental minds. And then again, while they're talking, think about our response. And then it becomes about responding instead of engagement. And that's where complex thinking can really help us. How can I engage with people and ideas in a new way without existing on either side of this continuum, right? So I think that's a really interesting way to start to think about it. And it doesn't mean you have to give up your opinion about something. It just creates more space for other people to come into your life and some new ideas. And it gives you some wiggle room to grow yourself. All right, so that's what I wanna talk about with this next part. So what I feel like happens with dualistic thinking is there's two things going on. One is a, a gift and the other is a challenge, right? And so when you think about the gift of dualistic thinking, I'm sorry, of complex thinking, <laughs> the gift of complex thinking looks like this. If we can get more comfortable with the ambiguities in life, then we can expand our understanding of ourselves and others. Right. So that is a gift, being able to expand our understanding, not only of ourselves, but also of other people. And then when we do that, we can have more meaningful connections. Right. And we can also broaden our view about what is possible. Right. And that to me is a forward thinking positive. It makes you feel good when you think about that. That's forward thinking. Right. But with that comes some fear because sometimes it's scary to do that. So what's the challenge? Well, we first of all have to stop rushing through all of our experiences right? It's because we're busy and we kind of already know, and we're moving on to the next thing. And I know that a lot of people can relate to that feeling of like, I want to be open, more open-minded, but I'm too busy too, right? Like I, there's, there's a quote in writing that said, I would have written less if I had more time. <laughs> Some people just write, write and write and write, but I take making a thoughtful statement, writing less or saying less can sometimes be more. So stop rushing through our experiences and taking some time with them, with either our emotions or with other people. It also, the challenge is how do we be with our emotions without judging them, either ours or other people's, right? How do we just be with them without judging them as right or wrong or good or bad? And it's, it's hard because a lot of times, again, it 
we get triggered into dualistic thinking because we become uncomfortable with our emotions. Right. And then it's maybe most of us want to develop self-awareness, but sometimes it's hard to find a meaningful way to do that. And that's a challenge. Becoming more self-aware isn't necessarily like, oh, I can't wait to do this. This is going to feel good in the end. It probably does. But sometimes gaining self-awareness is hard because of what comes up for us. Like, oh, I am kind of judgmental. Oh, I really didn't give that person time to say what they wanted to say. Wow. Maybe if I paused before I responded, that would be helpful. Maybe my relationships are complicated because there's no room for me to hear other people. And again, if you can do this without judgment on yourself, but more curiosity, hmm, how does that work out for me? Right? How is that going? We all have ideas ar around how that looks for us. Okay. But I think developing self-awareness isn't always an easy path, but it's worthwhile. And that's why I think it's a challenge in this case. Also, the biggest challenge I think that most people have is learning how to cultivate patience, right? How do we be patient in this process with other people for sure, but especially with ourselves when we're trying to like sit with all our feelings and think more in a complex ways, solve complex problems and show up in the world with more capacity to take in information, turn it on its head and live more in a 3D world. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about how this looks in our real lives and some examples of how dualistic and com complex thinking play out. Again, you're listening to the Transformation Talk Radio Network with me, Carrie Knudsen on the show, Get Big Out Loud. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for joining. Everybody, welcome back. You're listening to Get Big Out Loud on the Transformation Talk Radio Network with me, Carrie Knutson, your host. And I want to thank you for joining me today. There is still time to call in. If anyone would like to call in, the number is 1 800 930 2819. If you have any questions, that came up for you today or would like to discuss your own example of dualistic versus complex thinking, or if you have a great word as an alternative to non-dualism, <laughs> um, let me know. Just call in and let me know. It'd be great to hear from you. Also, if you want to reach out and contact me, I am at Knutson Speaks, K-N-U-T-S-O-N Speaks.com. And you can connect with me about presentations or coaching or classes or the things that I do uh, through that website. I'm a therapist who decided to take psychology off the couch and bring it to people. And that's part of what I'm doing on this show. And today we are talking about a concept called dualistic thinking. And that kind of thinking is this or that, right or wrong, good or bad, yes or no thinking. And we're comparing that to what more complex thinking looks like and how when we engage in complex thinking, we can recognize um, not only some space within ourselves that we might be able to grow, but also make connections with other people in more meaningful ways. So that's what we've been talking about on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. And again, thank you so much for joining me for my first solo show. And um, one thing I feel really excited about is the opportunity to share these ideas through a much greater network than I could have ever done in my one-on-one -on -one speaking events. And that's something that's interesting that's come out of the pandemic. When you think about before, uh, when everything shut down and I had my dualistic mindset of, if I can't speak in person, I'm not speaking at all, or I'm only used to speaking in front of people, so virtual is not an option. And how much growth has happened that allows me to say, all my events are virtual now, and I feel very excited about that. And I even have the opportunity to do a radio show now because of that. So that's been very exciting to think about the opportunities once you get through the mucky muck of the other stuff into realizing and thinking in different ways about how you might be able to show up. All right. So that's what we're talking about. I want to share a real quick story um, about how hard the work can sometimes be, why we don't want to engage in complex thinking because it's actually really hard work. And I had a friend of mine a few years back who went through a really horrible divorce and it was just heartbreaking on all sides. It took a long time. There was a lot of things going on. And afterwards, when it finally became finalized, my friend said this to me in kind of a joking way, but she said, 
you know what, I don't want to grow or learn or adapt or emote or find meaning or get perspective or be more self-aware or be patient <laughs> in any way for the next year because I'm exhausted. And I like it just because she was kind of flipping. I don't want to learn or grow or change. And we laughed at the time, right? Because it's a funny way to say it. But then I was like, you know why you don't want to? Because it's really hard work and you've just spent all this time engaging in that because of, through the process of the, this divorce, you it really brought up a lot of things for you related to self-awareness. And sometimes we don't want to do the work or we're tired of it. And it is hard work. So again, when faced with some kind of hard work, uncomfortable feelings, needing to be patient, creating some space for that, it is easy to see why we go to dualistic thinking because it's easier. It wraps things up. It helps us just stay focused on right, wrong, yes or no, good or bad. Here's what I'm doing. And so again, I don't want to just say dualistic thinking is necessarily bad, but I do think that it has its place. But if we stay there, we're missing out on opportunities, right? And I feel it's important to recognize that sometimes it's tiring to do the work, but that the work is still incredibly valuable. So I liked it when my friend said that to me because it really stuck with me how it can be hard for us to hold the space for us to do complex things, especially since when things happen to us, right, that we have to respond to. Um, and sometimes we aren't instigators of the change. And that is hard because that leads to feeling like we're not in control. And then sometimes a person or experience in our lives will cause us to examine ourselves or viewpoints. And then what we thought was true for us might not be true. And that's hard to sit with. So if you've ever had those moments where things have come up when you've been forced to face something about yourself, you have to be extra gentle and kind with yourself because it's not easy work. Again, it's worthwhile work, but it's not easy work, right? And it's important to remember that we're on a spectrum. <laughs> when, we're, when it comes to this of dualistic thinking and complex thinking, we're all on a spectrum. And if you can, in some areas of your life, it may be really easy, right? To be like, oh, I'm really engaged in complex thinking on this. It feels safe and good. I can do it. And then you can notice other areas of your life where you retreat into dualistic thinking because it's not as safe. It's, you're not as open-minded. So being... A complex thinker to me isn't just, I've shown up, now I'm a complex thinker. I think all of us are on a continuum of some things were more dualistic, some things we're able to be more complex on. And that's just the nature of who we are, right? And if you can recognize that on a continuum, you'll be able to see yourself in better ways. And there's also more opportunity there for growth, okay? Um, and again, sometimes situations, topics, people are easier or harder. So notice where you are on that continuum. Also notice where you might judge other people on the continuum, like people who might be on, I don't know, let's say someone that you know is vegan and the person says they're vegan. And then one day they decide that they want to have fish, right? Or meat or something else. And then they're like, does that mean they're totally not vegan? Cause they made that choice. Well, some people may be like, yep, yeah, you're not vegan anymore. You, you ruined the vegan code of, of being a hundred percent. And other people might be like, yeah, well, one time you had that, but most of your life you live that way. So you're maybe like 90% vegan, right? Whatever it is, notice our tendency to judge others from our viewpoint as all or nothing and um, how that doesn't actually serve us. And I do like to think of this idea of on a continuum, like how that could look. Um, another, another visual instead of a continuum, another reader wrote in to me for my newsletter and shared this. Her name is Robin. And I like this image that she shared about dualistic thinking. She said, what if dualistic thinking is like when you flip a coin and you don't know what side it will end on. And there's that time when the coin is spinning around and you can really see the edge of it before it makes a decision to be one way or the other. And she said, what if you could envision that edge of the coin, right? And, and be in that space, have the patience to be with it as it's spinning. And she said, even sometimes when the coin lands on heads, we flip it over because we need to be tails. <laughs> like I love the analogy of, of how you could think of it as a coin spinning, like the fine edge, like a thin edge of a dime, you know, can hold a lot of information. The same as if we look at things on a continuum, however, it makes sense for you. I just love this analogy um, 
because one of the things she brought up was what if we could look at things without trying to control the outcome? Like when you flip a coin, you can't really control the outcome. It's left up to chance and sometimes being patient in that moment. And I thought that was a really beautiful analogy to think about complex thinking, which, which I was like, thanks, Robin, for sharing that. And thanks for everyone on my newsletter list who contributed to today's show through writing me back. I really appreciate that. It was fun. Um, so what I want to close my show with today and as we're thinking about this is how when we're talking about dualistic and complex thinking, um, how can we create some space for ourselves first? Because sometimes, you know, when you make a change, you want everyone else to change. Like, you know, some information you're like, oh, if this person knew that information, they would really change. If this person could really use this information. And a lot of times in my talks, especially around emotional intelligence, people will be like, oh, I really want my partner to hear you talk on this. They could really use it. And I'm sure they could, but I always say, use it on yourself first, <laughs> right? No one loves to be told you really need this. You better get shape, shape, up, shape up, right? You need to change, right? So this idea of how we show up, do it on yourself first. Start thinking about the, the way you use dualistic and complex thinking and where you are on the continuum or where you are on that coin flip right? Use it for yourself first. And this is an invitation for you to create some space where you can acknowledge and recognize the complexities in your own life and look at your own self and say, wow, I have some things that are like maybe good and bad. Yes or no, right or wrong. And um, create that space without judgment. And also looking at where dualistic thinking is limiting you and your opportunities. Right. And I think, especially during the pandemic, we have a lot of times where it can be like, this didn't go so well. And this came out of it, or I'm, I'm proud of myself for getting through this. And this is how I might do better. Right. Or this is some opportunity that didn't happen. And I'm hoping to create something else here. Like, or there's a person that I really wish I could connect to. If I created some more space, maybe I could understand them better. Right. So that is all an invitation as to how we might start to use these ideas to help us expand. And one, one like interesting thing in my own life that helped me that a few years ago, my dad passed and he had suffered along his journey to finally passing. And I felt guilty that I felt both sad and relieved when he died. And I was really having a hard time talking to some about the relief I felt not only for his pain of his journey, but also for our family's pain and our family's journey. And like holding on to that guilt until finally I said something is, a, can you have two things be true at once? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Right. And you can hold space for both. So I hope as you go on from this, you'll notice in your own life, how dualistic thinking plays out in actions that you do or don't take, like how it limits you like what you might not do because we can't do that or this won't work because notice that and then bring some awareness to how this is not serving you. Like, for example, when I told you when my husband has a new idea, I've been really consciously trying to be like, let him say his idea and say, tell me more before I say why that's not going to work. <laughs> right. And that's, that's communication. That's engendering each other in a relationship. That's making things better. Right. Also, when you think about ambiguities in your own life, we all have them right? Where we, we, we're not all that rigid. We all have ambiguities that, that we need to recognize so that then we can recognize those in other people. We are very complex things. Nobody really is all or nothing a certain way. And especially when you get to know people, we're oftentimes surprised. I have a friend that we say we would never be friends on paper ever because she's her political views, religious affiliations, um, her views on certain social things, we completely differ. And we I always love it because we said, man, we would never be friends if you looked at us on paper. But we, we've engendered, we've been able to create this relationship over the past 15 years that's been actually very special and helped me grow in ways just from knowing someone who thinks so differently from me, right? So recognize the ambiguities in your own life and give space for other people to have theirs. And, and that helps with not being so judgmental. And the biggest thing is, once you can empathize with yourself, it is so much easier to empathize with other people. And that's why if you look into yourself first, instead of trying to change everyone else, look at yourself first and empathize with your own 
times when you've been really stuck in dualistic thinking and also notice when you've been scared and that's been a natural response, right? And then give yourself some empathy for the time where you had to sit with some complex thoughts that really didn't have a clear answer or where you needed perhaps more time to come to a decision, right? So these are all really great opportunities for you to think about. If you can empathize with yourself, then you can easily empathize with other people and you can hold some space for complex thinking, right? And complex people. And you yourself can recognize your own beautiful complexity. So I want to say thank you for joining me today on the Transformation Talk Radio Network for my first solo show, which I'm excited about. And I want to say thanks to all the tech people who are on the call who help make this happen. And I want to say thank you for the opportunity to do my show, Get Big Out Loud. And I'll see you next month. Um, with a new topic and new things to say on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. Thanks again for joining me today, everybody.